Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Thank you very much for tuning in yet again to the Aquarium Project YouTube channel. I really appreciate it and um, we're actually getting quite close to getting uh, hitting the 1000 subscriber threshold which is pretty crazy like I've been thinking about it. It's like um, that's a lot of people so if you haven't already smashing that subscribe button would help us get there which would be cool would make me a very happy chappy so yeah, but aside from that, um, what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be filming a bit more of a tutorial video. So, um, yeah, let's dive into it. So, the thing we're going to be doing a tutorial on is the Apache Superfood products. Um, and we're kind of going to be talking about how do we make it, um, what it's used for, what does it look like, how do you feed it, um, all that kind of thing. So, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching and let's get into the, the main subject matter, shall we? So first we'll start with what is Rapashi and these are some Rapashi superfoods and these are some Rapashi superfoods. So they come in this jar and what's inside the jar is basically a powder and then mixing it with boiling water and it becomes a gel. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing the grub pie and we're going to be doing the soiling green. These are the two that I use in the shop, um, different varieties for different fish. The grub pie goes to all the kind of carnivorous slash insectivorous slash um, omnivorous type fish really and then the soil and green goes to the stuff that's going to prefer a bit more algae it's like slightly omnivore towards herbivore type fish so things like your imbuna um, to your platys to your guppies um, all the live berries even like uh, bristle noses that kind of thing um, but that's the ones that we're going to be making today so first off, what do we need? So we obviously need the Rapashi. These are my two jars. I obviously use the big jars because I have a lot of fish, but imagine these are the tiny, the small little jars. Um, that'll be fine. You'll want some measuring spoons I find is the easiest. You will want a container that you're going to use. And then an optional extra is you can get an ice cube tray and a scraper. My ice cube tray is shaped in the shape of a little fish, but you can use any ice cube tray. Ice cube tray. I just use this because I'm the king of comedy basically um, so that's all you'll need and then you'll need some way to heat the water you can use a jug or I actually use the microwave um, and I'll show you how I do that another option is I actually add the nourish Seekem nourish vitamin and amino acid supplement um, this is kind of the information on it here this one's definitely optional um, but I find it helps bring out better colors and promote better growth in our fish particularly when fish first come in um, from our wholesalers you know they've had a big journey and everything so it gives them a little boost um, that's the only one that is very optional like this is just kind of fun but this you don't have to do it but I find it works but whatever works for you so for the Rapashi, what you want is so you want one part of this uh the actual powder and then three parts of the water so i have mine pre-measured out i know just above the line in this container is um 30 tablespoons that'll break down into some other measurement that'll be useful but i just measure it as 30 tablespoons and then i'll take 10 tablespoons of this um rapashi powder each one depends um once this water's boiled. But to boil it, I don't want to use the jug because if I tip the boiling water in there, it'll melt the container. So what I do is I just stick this one in the microwave um, to bring it to the boil. So at this stage, this is when I add the nourish. Um, so I just do one squirt's worth, um, like that. Just go straight in like that. Uh, don't mind all this blue liquid. I just spilled methylene blue all over it. So that's not supposed to be there. Um, but yeah, that was funny. So I'm going to struggle to film this with uh, one hand, but what we do is we reach in and we scoop out like per tablespoon and I just chuck 10 of them in here, which I'm going to cut because I need two hands to do it, but that's what we do. So that's 10 tablespoons and then you just mix it in like this and you want to make sure you do mix it all. Obviously um, you might be mixing less so it won't matter as much, but for me when I'm mixing this big amount I do always um, not mix it enough and find big clumps of powder in the bottom. So that's not supposed to be there, so that's not ideal. But then what we do is once we've done that and once it's still like in this liquid state before it sets, we'll tip it over the ice cube tray like this. Um, it's hard to kind of judge how much so I kind of tend to just go like that and then I get my little flat surface my little scraper and then scrape it over into the little ice cube uh, bits like the actual holes um, 
so then we go like that and then we scrape it all the way up this way um, this is really difficult with doing it with one hand I want you guys to know I will one day get a tripod and stuff um, so we can stop being such a wing it operation but not this day then I take the scraper and you can also do the same with your like the actual spoon but then shake it off in there and the fish can eat it so you know the, they can lick the spoon if you will what I'll do with the spoon oftentimes is take the spoon and dangle it in the tank like so and then leave it like that for 10 minutes and it will become spick and span clean the fish will actually uh, nibble off it and clean it all up so I've got the water again in pre-measured out amounts um, this is for the soil and grain so I'll take the nourish again and just drip it straight in there um, and then now we'll crack this one open but we have to go grab the spoon from the other tank actually now that I think about it so probably I should have sorted that first but we can whip this out and boom look it's like clean as so the fish are happy and I don't have to do the dishes so what more could you want um, oh hold on I'm gonna have to cut I can't actually open that one-handed whoops so this one I might actually be able to do so one two three four five six I'm sure this is boring for you guys seven eight nine ten and so we chuck that in and then what we'll do again is we'll stir it all up um, you know mix it all through this one's actually a little bit harder to mix I find because it's like a taller container so stuff gets stuck in the bottom a lot easier like um, you know clumps of powder that I've missed so you do want to give it a thorough mix I don't think well I know this isn't as big a problem when you've got smaller batches but me making a larger batch is not as clever um, and then this one is because this spoon is obviously a lot dirtier so what we'll do is we'll just go over here to the Mbuna tank here um, and just chuck the spoon in and then rinse my finger off and then they can go grab it all um, what are they doing? Oh, it's because I'm trying to wash my hand off as well. Um, but yeah, they can clean up that whole spoon. Um, they're not going to find it now because they're all a bit, bit overstimulated, shall we say. But yeah. So, I'll show you what it looks like once it's um, sort of set. Um, so this stuff here is like, as you can see, this will have set. So it's like a proper... Oh, actually, we'll take one out and we'll feed it, why don't we? Um, so here it is. It's like a proper... Uh, gel kind of consistency and it's really sort of solid um, like if I do this I don't know if you can see but it's like really solid so what we'll do is we will chuck this in which aquarium should we chuck this in we'll chuck it in this one um, it says all these guys here and we chuck it in and we can see them just going to town there biting all parts off my little fishy I suppose do I need a live live food live feeding warning for this um, but no, I don't, because it's not a real fish. But yeah, that's kind of how we do it. So yeah, I guess what I'll do now is I'll kind of give you guys a little bit of a rundown about why we might want to use it, why we might, might want to use the rapashi. So rapashi would be my favorite food, at least insofar as what we've got available in the New Zealand market. Um, and there's a few reasons. So like, I know it is a little bit of a hassle having to make it and everything, but what you'll do is with those containers what we just made, I'll just keep it in the fridge and then just portion it out uh, and like feed it out as needed. But it really is the best food that we have on the market. It is, in terms of quality and that, there's not really anything kind of similar. So if we read through all the ingredients, actually let's do that. Let's get, I'll grab the grub pie and we'll read through all the ingredients and I'll show you what I mean. So I grabbed a grub pie um, container here and I'll just read out the first five ingredients today. So we've got black soldier fly lava, dried seaweed meal, lecithin, locust bun, no, locust bean gum, um, calcium carbonate, and citric acid. So like those are all um, kind of true, real ingredients with nutritional value. Um, and then what I did is I also grabbed the Seachem Tropical Flakes as a bit of a comparison. Um, I think Seachem's 
one of, definitely one of the better options around. Um, but I'll read out these ones. So what we got, we got whole fish meal, wheat gluten, soy flour, corn starch, uh, chlorella algae, spirulina, garlic. That might be six ingredients. I don't know. I can't count. But that's got a lot of like wheat and flour and like glutens and stuff. So what that is is basically like filler ingredients. Um, it's important to remember every pellet and flake does need some. Um, otherwise it's not going to bind into an actual pellet or flake. It'll just be a kind of mush. But the good thing with Rapache is it obviously doesn't need that because it doesn't need to bind. It uses... I believe it uses agar, I think it is, off the top of my head, to bind, which agar is, does have some, like, agar's not great, it doesn't have a ton of nutritional value, but it has some, um, and it definitely has more than, like, wheats and stuff, and flowers and yeasts and stuff. So that's why I think rapashi is definitely the best fish food we have available in New Zealand. Um, it doesn't have to be this grub pie, there's heaps of options, like, I quite like the agapo explorer, which is good for, like, rainforest species, um, they got, uh, for your obligate herbivores, like your trophies and that, there's like the super green, the vegan algae formula. There's like morning wood for uh, uh, xylivores, I think it is, um, like scratching wood eating things, like um, goldfish formulas, community formulas, all this kind of thing. There's all different ones for different fish, so I would tailor which one you use to your specific fish, but there is one, there's formulas for everything, and I think those specific formulas like the for example the soil and green is the best formula for the best food available that we have for Mbona in New Zealand um, and I, I just really I can't recommend it enough it's pretty much all I feed my personal fish and the fish in here um, that and live baby run trim if it's small fish um, but like for example these peacocks and haps right behind me these peacocks and haps right behind me they get um, the grub pie probably five times a week and they get the soil and green maybe one times a week and that's it um they really do best on on the rapache i really love it um and hopefully this video gives you a bit of a bit of an idea on how to kind of approach it if you're looking at it for your fish tank so yeah thank you guys very much for watching i hope it's been informative for you if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I would really appreciate it. Um, as I said, we're getting close to a thousand subscribers, so that's pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all so, so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.